Hi, welcome to Senior Moments Successful Aging. I'm Mary Beals Ludka, your host. I'm the Area Agency on Aging Director, and you can reach me or my staff toll free at 877 521 3500. Successful Aging, Senior Moment Successful Aging, is co sponsored with the Division of Lifelong Learning at Yavapai College. Our producer is Nancy Bennett. And she's the one that does all the work behind the scenes, and I just do the talking. So we want to thank Nancy for all her work. Yes. And if you'd like to talk to Nancy or ask her questions about the show, you could give her a call at 717-7607. Or you might have an idea about something you'd like to hear about, something you want us to talk about. So again, give her a call at 717-7607. And our guest today is Dr. O. That's what I like to call you. Yeah, that's, uh, Carolyn O'Sullivan. <laughs> Welcome true. back. Thank you so much. This is going to be so great. Yeah, and Dr. O is totally fine. I like Dr. O. It's so easy, isn't it? Just yeah. Like, oh, yeah, it's good. So if you haven't had the chance to see one of our shows with Dr. O before, she is a doctor of veterinarian medicine. True. Yes. True, yes, amongst other things. Amongst yes. other things. <laughs> what, what, you had a master's degree in environmental? Education, yes. Education. Yes, 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 yes. I didn't so, realize that. I don't know yeah. how I missed that last time. Yeah, I have a master's degree in environmental education, and I uh, actually did really, really well at it. And that's when uh, I started learning about animals and animals with the planet and that how humans are doing what humans do to animals and the planet. And it was kind of a, a education that was kind of, somewhat depressing and so um, after that I started teaching and I opened up a business called what was it consignments for a small planet you know trying to save the world and all that wonderful stuff and I decided that that wasn't it so <laughs> I went to my veterinarian who I was working with doing doggy rescue in Connecticut and he just said have you ever thought about becoming a veterinarian and all of a sudden it was like light bulb Ta -da! Ta -da! Like, <laughs> no I haven't but and so it started to golly, 10-year journey to, wow. you know, because I, I have a master's degree, but I had to go back and get all these other prereqs to be able to apply to the veterinary schools. There's only 23 in the country, and then try to get the one in 1,000 seats to get in, and then start your four years in veterinary medical school, and then figure out what you're going to do, you know? So it was just, you know, not an about face because it all came together, right? It I mean, kind of fits. It totally fits, right? Yeah. So and now that I do holistics, and that I try and think about things as a whole, not just an isolated incident here and there. The environmental education piece um, is just invaluable. Invaluable, yeah. So, so it's good. And, you had, and, and in that 10-year journey, <laughs> yeah. you studied like every kind of veterinary medicine known to man. <laughs> Yes. Um, so in veterinary medicine, you can track, you know, mm -hmm. just like you can in any college, I guess, university. Um, you can do small animals, equine, or mi and a mixed rotation, or farm medicine. So I took a mixed rotation, which means that everything. And then veterinarians know how to do everything from the ground up, whether it's surgery, radiology, read this, read that, prescribe this, do this, do that. From the ground up, everything. We know how to do it all. And then I took every exotics course that they offered at Purdue. So that's your pocket pets, it's your lizards, your birds, your fin feather furs, um, scales, it doesn't matter. And then I went to Tasmania to do my externship in exotics. Well, I did my externship in kind of exotics, but in Tasmania, that's what they have, dogs and cats and exotics. And then I was fortunate enough to do the Tasmanian Devil Project, a little work there, and um, go out hiking and traveling in a place where everything that bites you or stings you will actually kill you. Kill you. Yeah, it'll actually kill you. You can't swim because the starkies are there, the salties are there, the crocs are there. The, you know, it's just it's just a new education and stuff. And uh, so I've I just tried to become diverse. And then I went to regular practice in Vegas, a huge 12 doctor practice, 24 hours on call, just, you know, Grinding western, western, mm -hmm. western, western, western. And then I had a family tragedy with my death of my father that um, slapped me in the face with, you know, Western medicine ain't all that. And so I went to, back to school, International, Vet, um, International Veterinary Acupuncture Society, and they take 300 people from all over the world to do this um, acupuncture, herbals, mm, acupressure, lots of laser stuff, lots of really outside the box thinking, food, 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 food. And um, I... It was amazingly difficult because um, you're you're back in veterinary school, but you yeah. have to relearn it and pin in. So that's that's a Chinese version of. Oh, so you're like, what the heck am I doing here? But um, I went back and tried to integrate it into my practice in Vegas, and that 
didn't work out super great. So um, I opened my own private practice in Vegas and was house call practice and then moved here. And now I'm doing what I do here. And uh, every single day I learned something new and every single patient is like a new adventure. So my office, I, uh, it's the uh, home of possibilities, thinking and free expression of joy because anything's anything's possible as you know yes. and uh, the free expression of joy is that as soon as that you come in and close the door it's a free-for-all you know it's just like you know, everybody you just free to be you and me type place <laughs> so, you're free to roam around the cabin you're free to roam around the cabin that's exactly right yeah. just have a good time you close so. the door and the dog gets to run around and be a dog yeah or a cat or a cat or yeah it yeah might be. yeah so what an amazing combination of you know, both disciplines mm. because there's something to be taken from both of them. And oh, now you've written sure. a book. Now I have written a book. Yeah. Isn't and that cool? And we're here to talk about the book. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm very excited. I, first of all, I love the name of the book. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I have to give kudos to my uncle for that. My uncle, he, I, he's, he's his own character. And so I, I don't even know why I told him I was doing the book because he's kind of a critic. Uh, kind of in a sarcastic, cynical, icky way, but <laughs> he came up with this list of like 12 different titles for just a book in general. He goes, nobody wants to, nobody's going to pick up a book that's just got a boring medical title and that's how you think. So here, and he gives me this list of 12 things and I, I'm, I'm looking through it and I couldn't stop laughing. I mean, because they were funny, you know, and then, <laughs> then as I started writing the book, I was kind of fitting them in, you know, trying to look at the titles. And then this is the one that won, Take Two Bones and Call Me in the Morning and then Holistic First Aid for Dogs and Cats. And, um, when the book, um, when they redid the book title, it, it looks just like this, except for the O here has got two little dog ears on it. Cute. Yeah, yeah they just kind of cutened it up just a little bit more. But um, yeah, I, I, I think it's awesome. I think it's a great, you know, <laughs> yeah, instead of taking two aspirin. Yeah, that's exactly bones, right. Take two bones, morning. call me in the morning, and see what the hell happens. You know, so, and that's what it, when you say holistic first aid. I mean, you know, I've had a chance to, I have not read the book from beginning to end, but I've gone through a little bit of it. And I was amazed at all the different little things that I would not have thought of. And, and you don't think about first aid for your pet until something bad happens. So the back of the book, right, where uh -huh. it kind of says, it's supposed to be about the author and all these like self-aggrandizing stuff about me on the back cover, which I'm like, ew, I actually had to get a professional headshot done, <laughs> which is like, are you kidding me? So, so <laughs> sorry for anybody who sees that and they're like, that's not what she looks like. But um, <laughs> it basically says, you know, I would like you to read this book 10 times yeah. and never have to use it versus not having read it and not be able to provide safety for your loved one, yeah. you know? So, so, and that I just want people to be, it, when you come face to face with an emergency of any kind, whether it's real or imagined, I need you to relax. I mean, like be calm and collected going into it because you're your animal's advocate, your sense of centering, your sense of keep your crap together at this moment because they need you is so important, right? Yeah. So if we have, for me, if we have something like this that you've read, you have some ideas, and that in the book, most of it is, that's not true, most of it, many pieces of it is, how do we relax the animal? How do you yeah. stay relaxed? How do we address the issues in a very, very, um, common sense isn't the right way to say it because there is no common sense, right? But in a way that makes sense with acronyms or makes sense with, I can flip to the damn page and it'll tell me again what to do. Um, and there's always going to be a buddy system, right? You need to have a buddy. They need to be on speed dial. They need to, you know, so you have these things set up proactively. And Lord knows I'm not the most organized person on the planet, but I also don't think about this the same way most folks do because I do this for a living. Right. So my, my body, my brain, everything about me just goes into the right mode. So this book is about um, how, how do you do it when it happens and how do you approach it correctly and how do you look around your house and think, what do I need to accomplish with the stuff I have at hand while I'm making the phone calls I need to make to take the best care of my friend. And um, I, I, you can tell people how it felt to you because the way it feels to me is different because like I said, I look at things differently than non-veterinarians look at things. Right. So it was hard. I had to rewrite the book about seven times. <laughs> I write it and I'd send it to somebody and they go, yeah, I don't know what that means. I'm like, oh, okay. And then like, yeah, what does that word even mean? I'm like, what does that word mean? How can you not know what that word means? And I'm like, oh, so, so I'm just, I can't tell you how thrilled I am that some of the folks here have read it mm -hmm. and they're like, damn, that's good. I'm like, oh, nice. It yeah. makes sense. Yeah. It's easy. It's lay terms. Yeah. And that's what, you know, and for me, yeah, I look at things differently from my medical background. Right, right. You know, and but I learned 
from reading through it. I mean, things that I wouldn't think about, you know, because it is an animal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, things correlate. There's things in first aid they're going to be, well, just like giving CPR to a dog is not anything like mm -mm. giving CPR to a person. And don't try it that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. It didn't. And, and when I, you know, I was looking over that section, I went, wow, I just never thought like, of that before. Oh, oh, okay. that makes sense. Okay. It yeah. does make sense when, when you see it and you think about their anatomy and how they're built. But uh, yeah, you have to stop and think about it. So just because you're in the medical field doesn't know, mean that... Yeah, it, it you need to read this book. It doesn't translate. It, doesn't. it just doesn't translate because no. I, I can do CPR all day on a human or on these guys or any kind of creature because I know the rules. Yeah, you know, and I, I know that you know, you know, I know that What's I only the goal? I only compress forty percent, and that could be a kitten like this, or I could be an English mastiff like this, or I could be a horse that's like this. I, it, they're just different rules, right? right? And then the fact that we're built this way. And they're built this way, right. and you can't get where you need to get. You can't get there from here if you're just act, thinking human. So, it's it's stuff that it'd be nice to know yeah. before you came face to face with the problem. Or you know, if my if my kitten or my cockatiel is choking versus my German Shepherd, yeah, I'm going to approach it a little bit differently. You know, so um, yeah, so that's what the book's about. Yeah, I like that, and yeah. and I, I I think you're right. The number one thing is not to panic. You, know, oh. you always say that. When my yeah. dog's sick, don't let her know that I'm upset because she gets more upset and feeds off of it. Exactly. Especially my dog. She, yeah. <laughs> she has a little bit of a toot and, and she's like, oh, mommy's upset. You know, so yeah, you've got to be calm. And it's just like, you know, working with humans. You still need to be calm and show them that you're in charge and it's okay. Yeah. I've got this handled. Yeah. And that the, they're here to make us happy, to keep us happy, yeah. and to keep us safe. And when the tables are turned, they're still going to try and do that. And if we have this anxiety component, or we have this thing going on, or uh, oh, God help us, the panic thing, um, that's not helpful to anybody. And even yeah. even in the car ride to the emergency hospital, there's going to be hopefully somebody driving and somebody sitting back who is speaking kindly, and everything's going to be okay. And you know, doing some really cool pressure points and doing you know, but just really. You know, really, everything's going to be okay because I'm a firm believer that they know more than we do. They're much more in tune with us than we are with them, and that they feed off of what we are. Yeah. You know, are are whatever you want to think about with your aura, your energy, whatever it is. But um, just and it's okay to tell them you're afraid, but everything's going to be all right. We're going to do this together. You know, and just let's get there and get it done. You know, and then making the phone calls to the emergency hospital as you're driving there and saying this is what's going on. They'll meet you at the door and get you done that fast. You know, everyone here, especially around here, they're so fantastic with their emergency medicine. They're awesome. So, nice. but be, having the phone number on speed dial, tell them what the hell is going on. They walk you through it as you're in the car or as you're on the ground, or, and just having that buddy system, that group of supportive people around you, while you're trying not to panic because your best friend is doing whatever. Yeah, yeah. Get ready to do that. You never know. You don't. You you know, know, I'll never the, forget the time my golden retriever went through a, a barbed wire fence. That's fun, isn't it? You know, and it's like she's not moving. Why? So I turn her over. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like when you see all that blood, you know, you just have to breathe for a minute and just say, okay. Yeah, but this is Let's this, look at it. These are, these are your ABCs. You know, yeah. these are your ABCs. And then you have to, you know, you just, you know, you have an airway. Bleeding, circulation, and then bleeding. Yes, we have a lot of bleeding. Let's deal with that right now. It would be awesome. You yeah. Know? And then how do you? But you know, so even if you're you think that way, if you're an acronym thinker, or if you're an A-type personality, whatever it is, figure out a way to help have this book help you do a better job if and when it hap anything happens. You know. So. Um, yeah. So, like I said, you read it as a civilian. You tell me what you thought, because I, I, I actually liked the book quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I liked um, that it was easy in sections. Mm. So, so if something happened, yeah, read through it, you know, because you, you should all be versed in first aid, period. Mm. So, you know, yeah, you should be, if you've got a friend, you need to be versed in that first aid as well. Yeah. Because yeah. you never know what's going to happen. You're going along, your dog's happy, healthy, and boom, something could happen like go through a fence, you know, uh, get stuck by, stung by something, bit by something, or they become ill yeah. unexpectedly, or they swallow something weird, or mm -hmm. you never know. You never know. And I, so I like the fact that you can just quick guide to a, a section. Yeah. There's a yeah. section on bleeding and a section on, you know, different things so that you can open it up and I learned new things like I, I had no idea you could use sugar in a wound. Superficial wounds. Yeah, but you know just little things that you can use from around your house. That's right, yeah, yeah, that's great stuff. Yeah, well and then yeah. this is not, this is not instead of, 
getting to an emergency no. hospital. This is, you know, in addition to, on the way to. It is, you know, none of the things that I have in this book are instead of. Because if you have an emergency, get your animal to an emergency vet. But, you know, the, there's a thousand times where you don't, you can't, or they're away, or this, or that. My, the one I use a lot is that I'm out hiking and my dog gets bit by a rattler. What, what the hell do you do? And you're on the middle of nowhere, you know, so it, it can happen, right? Or I'm driving down the road and the person in front of me just hit a dog. Well, what do you do? Yeah. And what do you do? Yeah. And so first panic and then pull over. And then, you know, they're in, you're in traffic. So what do you do? And um, I do that in my class. You know, I teach one of these classes here at Yavapai College. And uh, people just go, like, take a deep breath, close your eyes, mm -hmm. visualize it happening. What do you do? And uh, then we go through it because, you know, you actually learn a lot about people and their, their answers because you can like go, you're in the medical field and you're in the medical field because the, the way their body, you know, their brains work. And, um, but what you would do with the human and what you would do with the non-human are quite different. You know, the ABCs, of course, but you're in traffic and you have a down, painful, I don't know who the hell you are, dog with really nice teeth. Okay, you know, what, what do you do? And I like the fact that you used um, alternative ways to muzzle mm, the you dog. You have to, right? You know, little things. Because you, you do have to protect yourself, especially if you're dealing with a larger animal. You know, well, so they're scared how do you and they're painful. Yeah. And the thing is that if they bite you for whatever reason, you are incapacitated. You're not able to do the work that you need to mm -hmm. do to help them. But then when it comes right down to it, they're going to be blamed for it. Yeah, they're going to be blamed it's for true. it. It's true. So don't don't do that. Don't put them in that situation. Yeah. So protect you, them. You know, the both. first thing is always if there you know there's a couple of reasons why you wouldn't muzzle an animal if they're vomiting, they can't breathe, they're having a seizure. There's a bunch of stuff, right? But relatively speaking, protect yourself from their teeth and with cats from their claws, right? Yeah. Because they've got a lot more weapons. But the book's got some pretty cool pictures in it. Yeah. Are, <laughs> very well <laughs> illustrated. So you can, it's like you know I like that because. I'm well, a very visual person, so oh. it's nice to see the illustrations. Well, what we did is we took pictures of my boyfriend and his dog, and then some of my clients and their dogs and cats, and, uh, and we actually have pictures of them. And then the girl that illustrated the book, Melissa Nor, right there, she, <laughs> she went and made them into drawings, you know? Okay. So, and, oh my gosh, they're hysterical. <laughs> and because they're very personal for me, and uh, I look at them like, well, is that what you look like in print? You know, they, they, and um, she did a great job, you know, and you can actually visualize what's going on, the Heimlich maneuver, drowning, doing this little CPR here, a little bandaging there, and um, the, the cat taco, you know, wrapping the yeah. cat up in the cat taco <laughs> and a little muzzling thing. And uh, yeah, I think that she did a great job. Yeah, so whether you're a reading thinker, a tab, you know, like a bullet point thinker or a picture thinker, I hope that we covered mm -hmm. that for everybody, you know. So when you're in emergency, you're like, Oh, yeah, that's what I got to do. So, um, yeah, we'll see. You know, I, it, it even goes down to the detail of how you hold your finger when you do acupressure. Of course. Now, see, now, I didn't even, you know, yeah. I mean, it's got to be right on. Yeah. You can't bend it. You can't do anything. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, so so you want, so, like, I do acupuncture, right, with needles. Right. So the needle doesn't wee-wah. You know, the needle doesn't, eh, so, Yeah. So you, usually you don't have your fingernails cut, but who knows, go straight down. Straight down. You apply direct pressure. And then if you don't have enough pressure, you kind of do this. Right? right? And if you have too much pressure, ugh, you do that, you know? So we want steady, Straight equal pressure. On. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, if you're nervous or whatever and your finger's doing this, don't bother. And then if you're super nervous, for like some people like myself that are, I get into it. Um, <laughs> so, ee, and then I do that. The hell is that doing? Nothing. You know, my finger is, you know, kind of wee wah this way versus none of the, so, so direct straight down. Direct straight pressure. Yeah, and the thing is, sense. we don't have to worry about if you're if you're off point a little bit. We're not going to be obsessing about those things because we're in the middle of an emergency. But if you're in the area, and every animal is different size, different shape, but the idea was, you know, when they're stressed, do this. You know, these are all their, these are all the relaxation points. Jimmy loves that. Yeah, right. So yeah. don't we all really? Yeah. You know, so that <laughs> <Bet> um, me. <laughs> <laughs> like here, I'm feeling a little stressed. So, um, so it's not. This isn't about perfection. It's just about ideas that might help mm -hmm. when the time comes to make things go a hell of a lot better for all of you. And it doesn't mean that you don't have somebody going like this for you while you're doing this for your dog to try and relax. <laughs> it's like, relax the human, relax the patient, relax the human, relax the patient. I do that a lot in my practice, don't I? <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yeah, right, so right. I'm hoping that, I mean, honestly, um, I'm hoping that everybody will get this. And it's, it, I just want our pets to be safe. You know, I mean, because yeah. when it comes right down to it, 
you don't want to do have to do a thousand emergencies and I've done, you know, you, you don't want to do that. But when the time comes and you don't have anything except for the shirt on your back and your shoelaces, you can do a lot of work. I mean, you can do a lot of work, right? In class, I, I stand there, I just don't take my jacket off or I take this off. I'm like, you can do a lot with this. This is a kitty burrito. This is a muzzle. This is to heat up a shocky dog. This is this. And your shoelace, this is a muzzle. This is a, you know, I mean, we can do so much stuff with that. So, and then my favorite one is an egg carton for large breed dogs. You know, you just shake out the darn eggs, put your bandages on because, you know, if you have a, any kind of open wound, a fracture, you have to stabilize the leg or whatever one joint below and one joint above the problem. So when you have an animal like this, an egg carton, you can kind of crush it, one joint above, wrap it with your shirt, put your shoelaces around it to keep pressure on it while you're getting your butt to the hospital, right? And then yeah. you drive into your emergency room with an egg carton on your animal. But um, like, egg carton, you know, Dr. O. <laughs> like, oh, I, you know, I heard she's doing that. But the egg carton is an amazingly stable structure. Yeah, and I and wouldn't have thought of that. It's, you a know. Cra it's a crazy stable structure. and. Uh, it works, you know, it just works. But um, just stuff like that. And we, I think we wrote, I think I wrote down probably two, three dozen ideas that aren't in a traditional kit, but might be in your car. And I'd like to think that everyone that reads this and everyone that owns an animal has an animal first aid kit in their car or a human first aid kit or has, you know, a disaster prep kit in their car. I don't. I don't. I do. So, but I don't have a dog one. Right. So I can't assume everyone else does, but right. wouldn't it be cool if we did? Yeah, it would so, be very helpful so if everybody did. This book's going to be that big. It's going to be paperback, you know, that's going to flip through it, you know. Nice. And then it's going to, we're going to have the first aid kit to go along with it if you want to. So you can put it in that pull out drawer in your car or in your dashboard or whatever. Have one at home, have one in your car, you know, just. <laughs> See what happens. And I asked you before we started filming, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, is that sh you list in there what you ought to have mm -hmm. in the first aid kit. So from someone who doesn't know as much as I should about holistic medicine, <laughs> some of the names in that first aid kit were a little foreign to me. I'm like, well, where am I going to get that and where am I going to get this? So most of, the, yeah. uh, most of the stuff that's in here that is, ends with a 6C or a 30C and it's weird names, those are homeopathics. So okay. they come in this little, they actually come in a, little blue tube that's about as big as my finger here, and you twist them and these little white pellets come out. The little white pellets dissolve on anything, okay. meaning that under their lip, under their tongue, anywhere, um, in their mucosa. So you don't have to shove it down their throat, it just melts, just like those melting aspirin used to. Mm -hmm. um, and they are, you know, they're very small, um, and that you just carry them wherever you go, and you just twist it, one falls out, and you put it on the mucosa. Even if you have a muzzle on, right, you can still take you can their still little put lip it out. In there. Right there. So, one of the things I like what you said, though, is that I, you know, you're going to have those available, mm -hmm. all put together for somebody, mm -hmm. so that you don't have to run around and find the homeopathic correct stuff. Yes, correct. And so that's nice to know because that was one of the first questions I had when I read that list. Like, I'm like, what the heck am I going to do this? Um, but I also like the fact that you've got a lot of practical things in there that I've got in the house or I have in the car that I can already use. But it, but if you want to have a really nice first aid kit, you can go on your website. Yes. www.holisticvetservices, and it's all one word, yep. and we'll put that on the byline. Holisticvetservices.com. Or just call us. Or just call you, yeah. and your number is? 928-925-4130. And I can give you my um, email if you want to. Okay. That might be helpful. Um, okay. It's a bigdogdvm at hotmail.com. Okay. So one way or another, you can reach me and everyone who's going to be involved in this. And you can ask about not only the kit, but when the book's going to come out. Yeah. And where's the book going to be available? Um, I'm going to have copies in my office, mm -hmm. and then depending on how things go before the end of the year, it'll be one of those things you can get on like Amazon or um, Barnes & Noble. And what is the other big book vendor? Kindle? No. No, that's Amazon. It's actually like a, like a, book, a brick and mortar bookstore. It, what, Barnes & Noble, and there's another big one. Um, and it's escaping me. Yeah, you and me both. I've been working okay. on that. But um, Amazon will have it. This office will have it. I'm going to be going to like Pellegrin Books and some of the other places. And okay. I'm in the process of trying to s make arrangements with Petco and PetSmart and Costco and all these other big places. But you actually have to have the book in your hand to mail off to them to say, hey, look how cool this is. Carry this in your store, please. So I'm in the process of doing that because okay. I really want it to be everywhere. Yeah, because it's really helpful. I hope so. I, I appreciate so. it very yeah, much. So. Yeah. And again, back to, you know, there's all these different sections. Um, and um, you really, 
I think this, they really go towards uh, more of the holistic, what do you have around the house versus Western medicine, and then you get them to the, to the vet in the emergency room and they can well, take over with that. Well, is so, a little both? Yeah, but the, the first line of defense always, always, always is their ABCs, airway, bleeding, bleeding, circulation, make sure that they have an airway, you know, they haven't choked on something, and then bleeding, am I bleeding, you know, am I bleeding out, do I have, you know, whether it's arterial bleeding versus venous bleeding versus is it, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that goes on. How do I put pressure on that? How do I tie that off? And circulation, you know, are my gums pink? You know, is my heart beating? Those types of things. Because nothing that you're going to do on the homeopathic driving fast end of the world is going to help a spit if you don't have those three things in order. They're just not, you know, so yeah. get that part together. And then assess for other things. Because it doesn't matter if you have a fracture, if you have an enucleation, if you have a snake bite, if you've lost your ABCs, they're dying. Yeah. So fix that first. I mean, they are dying. If your if your creature goes into shock, is turning white and getting cold, I don't care about everything else. Fix that. I mean, fix that. These are your priorities, and it's shockingly Western, right? Isn't it? I mean, this is That's all Western. True. Save That's their true. life. Yeah. And then when you get to play, or they're nervous, or you need to help out with other things that maybe not so life threatening. Heck yeah, we're gonna do some stuff that's offside, you know, off the grid on your way to making the phone calls to the poison control or your local emergency vet or your buddy or what your car whatever it is on your way to those types of things because if it's an emergency you need to talk to emergency trained folks to help you with that and if, even if you don't make it to the emergency hospital for whatever reason get on the phone with somebody so they can walk you through it and you can tell them what progress you've made what you're doing and maybe they have great ideas true maybe they have great ideas yeah. on top of that kind of stuff but um it in no way displaces Western anything because we have to do the primary keep us alive steps. Mm -hmm. And then after that, if we want to help them not vomit, if we want to calm them down, if we want to try and control their seizures on the way, heck yeah, we do a bunch of acupressure points. We do some homeopathy points. We do some wound care from stuff that we have at the house. Heck yeah, we do that. But we start with Western. We do what we need to do in the interim, and hopefully with win with Western, and hopefully you know you get to the emergency room and it's not that big of a deal. They do their triaging, they do what they do at emergency hospitals, and send you home with a very Western protocol, no doubt, that you can um, add on to. There you go. But there's yeah. no, there's no, there's not, a, there's not one word in this book that negates Western medicine. Yeah. I think that's good to point in, out. Especially in an emergency. I, I mean, think that's important to point out, yeah, yeah. you know. So take two bones and call me in the morning. Yes. I love that. I love that. <laughs> so while it's holistic first aid for dogs and cats, it's also really the ABCs, Absolutely. you know, and doing those emergency things first. What are the priorities? How do you take care of your pet the best way you can? Well, the thing is that holistic means that. And holistic yeah. means everything, everything. Every tool in your right. toolbox. And in the case, this case, your toolbox is going to be mighty Western. Thank you, Dr. O. I really appreciate you being here, and thank you for joining us today on Senior Moment, Successful Aging. Until next time. Yes, next time.